And at long last, let's talk about Sony, my home team. Um, they easily, <laughs> easily won E3. Like, they came in, they came in when just were like, were like, like looked at the competition and was like, we got this. Like they came like like they had such a such a great showing. It was so good. It was incredible. And it like like last year it far exceeded my expectations of what it was going to be and what they were going to do. I feel like I should trust Sony more when it comes to these conferences now, but I don't know. It's like every year I'm always like, I don't know about PlayStation. I don't know about Play and they and like for the past two years in a row they've been like kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. So I, this is one that I will definitely talk about in chronological order, so I'm going to do, you know, play-by-play. Play. Um, whoever's idea it was to get a live orchestra for this is a wonderful human being. I, I love you. You are awesome, whoever you are. whoever Whoever's idea it was to get a live orchestra, you're beautiful. Um, because that, that lended so much gravitas to the whole thing like it actually felt like an event like so many of these conferences just feel all like flat and corporate like and like even microsoft and bethesda as good as they were they still felt you know they still had that twinge of like you know kind of flat kind of kind of like corporate like very very not not exactly cold but not exactly you know warm and grandiose either this thing, I got chills, like, listening to this. I got chills, and I was thinking, I'm like, like, when they started the orchestra up, I was like, I was like, is this God of War? Are they really going to start off with God of War? Because I figured they were going to save that for, like, the end, or in the middle, but no, it was like, I, I waited up through that music, which was beautiful soundtrack, loved it. And I was like, like when it, the guys were like, Ooh, oh, like the chanting, I was like, that has to be God of War. There's no way that's not. And then when it, and then when it got to like the the sweet kind of somber melodic kind of stuff, I'm like, is this God of War? Is it really? And then and then right when the the woman kicked in with the the, the drum and she went like the. Um, I was like, that's God of War. That is absolutely God of War. If that is not God of War, I will be very disappointed, because that, that is God of War. I know that kind of, that vibe from the music. And sure enough, like, right when the music ended, that fucking curtain rose, and you had Kratos stepping out of the shadow with, like, a beard and an axe, and he just, and he had, I think his voice is even different now. I would be shocked if that was the same actor, but it, it sounds different. I, we don't know how old he is now. We don't know how he got to be in Norse mythology now, which it's North, North, Norse mythology. Sorry. Norse mythology, which is very exciting. Really, really like that idea. I, I've been on board with that idea since the beginning, and I like that a lot. Excellent, just just superb build up with like the live music and the way it was directed. How like the reveal of Kratos when he stepped into the sh out of the shadow, like when he like when he stepped out of the shadow and he was like he was like Hunt, I am hungry. Like the crowd just erupted into applause. You didn't get that kind of a response to even the best at Microsoft show. You didn't you did not get that kind of response. So it was like a roaring applause for the return of Kratos. And then like even my like one of my friends watching it was like, "Oh shit!" like when Kratos popped up. At first I didn't recognize him with the beard and then I was like I saw the marking. I was like I was like, "Is that Kratos?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, it's Kratos." But I I and I I have to eat my words. I'm actually glad that Kratos is back for this. And I'll tell you why. Because this it, this feels, even though it's called God of War, it has a very God of War like aesthetic to it, with you know Kratos and the the bloody combat and all that. This feels like an evolution of the series, both in terms of gameplay and in terms of character development. With the way it like structures, and he has a son, by the way. We don't know if this is a blood blood son or if this is him mentoring the the child of his lover or something like that we don't know we don't know yet it's too early 
But he's teaching this, the whole demo was about him teaching this kid how to hunt. Like him telling the kid, go off, kill a deer, bring us back food so we survive. To get like toughen the kid up. And it has like this new cinematic camera angle. And it's not like the over overview camera stuff like it's been in the past God of War. It's very up close. And it reminded me a lot of that, um, the, the Ninja Theory game that they're doing called um, Hellblade which also has a very cinematic like camera camera view to it very like it like like in your face kind of combat thing which i was a little iffy about at first i was like i was like is this how they're going to do the combat now cuz i'm not of course i'm not used to that from god of war and i was like well this could be okay maybe but it's grown on me and i of course i would need to play it of, of course i would need to play it to get a better opinion but I like I like this idea of the cinematic camera angle because it is a reflection of how Kratos is in his current state. He is older, he's much more mellow, he is wiser, he's like a, a father figure now, and it's it's very interesting to see this from a character that I mean I, I love Kratos. Don't get me wrong, love Kratos. He's probably my favorite uh, PlayStation mascot of all time. In God of War is probably my favorite PlayStation series of all time, but it it lends him this dignity and you know emotional investment that we haven't gotten from him. He's he's a one note character in all the games. He just like his two modes are loud and louder. He just like will scream and scream and kill and murder and just do everything. He's not a not like from a personality standpoint, he's not a very interesting character, but what makes him interesting in those other games is how powerful and how driven by revenge he is. Um, but this time around, he's got to take care of a kid. So he, like, and you, act, you can actually see it in the gameplay when he's like starts yelling at the kid for losing the deer. He's like, he's like, he's like, boy, do not. Oh, and he kind of has to like, you know, breathe and calm down. And he, cause I mean, you can tell there is still that beast, that beast that killed the entire Greek Atheon is still in him, but he is in a world now where he has learned to keep the beast within him, which makes him, in turn, a more interesting character from like a character development standpoint, which is something I thought I would never see in my lifetime when it came to Kratos. So that was great. Um, I liked the combat a lot. I liked the the relationship he seems to have with the kid. I loved the like the reveal of the world at the end when he when he goes you are ready. And then the kid's like, for what? And he goes, a new beginning. And it's like the epic music. The, oh, yeah, oh. And like, see, you see like a dragon fly over them and they just, and it, again, it just erupts into this beautiful music and it's boom, God of War. And we don't know if it's just called God of War or if they haven't decided on a, a subtitle. I hope it, there's a subtitle to it. Cause I, as I, as I said with, with, um, I forget what it was, like the Star Wars Battlefront and stuff like that. I don't like this trend of reboots having the exact same name as their predecessor. It makes it confusing. So, started out with God of War. That was a hell of an opening. I was like, I was like, okay, I, I hope they haven't blown their wad with this. And then um, they brought out, well, Sean Lanning came out and did a very, very moving speech about you know, the Orlando shooting, and, I mean, a lot, all the people I've been doing, not, like, big speeches, but, you know, they have, like, the, the, the rainbow pendant on their, their breast and stuff like that, which is a very nice tribute, very respectful, but he had a very, very touching, and it was nice to hear him say, you know, we at Sony are, like, we, we stand by the LGBT community, and I thought that was great for an executive to come out and actually, like, point blank say that on a stage I, I give him very high respect for that very very classy very appreciated um but he also had that tone in his voice like you know even though this horrible event happened we're not gonna let that stop us from being here on this day of celebration with these cool new video games so i, I liked that and it didn't feel shitty or anything it just felt like a very natural transition to 
what was going to happen next. Then they revealed Days Gone, which is the next game from Bend, which has been in development for a long time. Um, they dropped hints about it. I think some of it was leaked a long time ago, but it's been officially revealed now. It's called Days Gone. It's, as people predicted, it's a post-apocalyptic game where you are some kind of former bounty hunter that lives on, like, the open road um, and likes the thrill of the hunt with the zombies and all that. And I thought that was an interesting change of tone for a lot of these games are all about, you know, we have to survive, we have to, it's all gritty and do this. And, and you know, of course, there are excellent games that have come out of that kind of atmosphere, like Telltale's The Walking Dead, which, season three, yes, thank you. Um, Last of Us, which is one of my favorite games ever, and one of the very best PlayStation exclusives, um, that that did that vibe very, very well, but I, as I've said before, I'm not a big zombie guy, but I liked what I saw from Days Gone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the demo here, because I, I'll get into why later, but... The Days Gone demo, I liked that that World War Z vibe to it, where it's like the hordes of zombies just crawling all over each other, and it, they all looked like, like golem-like zombies, and it was like swarms of them were coming. And I don't know how many zombies that was, like how many zombies the PS4 could render. That was, I don't know if that's playing on like a, like a regular PS4 or if they just snuck in a Neo somewhere in there, but if that's, that's the new, if that's the original PS4... That's impressive how much they can render with that thing, with how many zombies were on screen. It was incredible. So yeah, I liked I liked what I saw from Days Gone. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like be like, oh my god, Days Gone, but it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, that looked cool. I, I'm I'm I'd be interested in learning more about that. Moving on to The Last Guardian, which finally, finally, after all these years has a solid release date. It's October 25th, 2016. Now imagine if they had put that date on the trailer all the way back in 2009. People would have laughed Sony off that stage. But it looks superb. Uh, it has two dog birds in it. Maybe even more, which is always a plus for me. Um, can't wait to get the collector's edition, which has a statue of the dog bird. So that's the that's the main reason I want the collector's edition because I I love the dog bird. And again, the live music did a lot. It made it feel very, you know, epic. Like what we were seeing was this big monumentous thing, and I, I loved it. And I'm so happy the release date for it is 2016, which that. Finally, after like in the first time in the PlayStation 4's history, we finally, 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 finally have a strong holiday exclusive for them. We didn't get one in 2014. We didn't get one in 2015. And I'm sorry, I'm not counting Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. Finally, in 2016, we get a damn good holiday exclusive and it, it it turns out to be the last guardian one of the most famous uh, legendary games of all time so i hope it's good it looks great i'm very very excited to finally get my hands on it and like final fantasy 15 it's going to be surreal when i finally just have it in my hands and i'm able to just pop it into my ps4 and i can finally like say to myself i own the last guardian I, I can play The Last Guardian. That will just... I, I Even while I'm playing it, I won't believe it. So, I, I can't wait. It's going to be cool. Then they showed off extensive demo. Probably the most extensive demo out of the night. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which, of course, looks so good. And I, they revealed a couple more things with this. Like, they extended on the Monster Hunter vibe that I got from the last demo, uh, last year... Um, where Aloy will call out, you know, strategies or weaknesses of the monsters that she's fighting, and it revealed a dialogue wheel, like, a la Mass Effect or Witcher, and it, still, it looks gorgeous, and, and I'm very excited to get my hands on it. I'm still a little 
that's not coming out in 2016, which the which the the one two punch of that and Last Guardian would have sealed the fucking deal for for PlayStation this holiday season cuz Xbox doesn't have Halo anymore to fall back on. Xbox only has like a few games and and but you know what? Sony has The Last Guardian and to me The Last Guardian looks far more interesting than any of the other any Xbox One exclusive I can think of. Any Microsoft exclusive I can think of. And that's just not me being a Sony fanboy. That's like genuine like genuinely what I feel. So Horizon Zero Dawn looked damn good. Very excited. Definitely one of my most anticipated games of 2017. Then they moved on, which which at this point I was think I'm, I'm I was thinking and I said this multiple times throughout the conference. I must have said this like three times after God of War reveal, Days Gone, Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn. I was like, I'm thinking, wow, this is like four exclusives in a row. I'm like, how can they keep this momentum going? And they go to Detroit Become Human, which I know a lot of people are very cynical about and snarky towards um, David Cage, which kind of rightfully so because he's a little bit of a a strange individual, but and then he overuses the word emotions so much. But I liked, I really liked what was shown from the game. It looks interesting, and I hope this this reveal of like um, you know a, a secondary protagonist, and you got the whole emphasis on your choices matter and the dynamic story changes and stuff like that. My biggest problem with something like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls is that a lot of those so-called dynamic story changes were illusions. Like, you could literally put the controller down and the game wouldn't let you die for a good while. Even even during the trials that um, Ethan had to go through in Heavy Rain, you could just put the controller down and watch and the game would just force you to win. And that's it. So, but I, I'm hoping Detroit Become Human, like this emphasis on your your decisions matter, is not bullshit. I hope it actually is, you know, possible that you can kill off one of the characters right from the very beginning. Which, if that's true, that would make it very interesting. But, of course, we've seen Quantic Dream promise this before. So, and they did not deliver. So, I'm... I'm hoping this is the one that finally does it. And it's not that I hate Quantic Dream. I, I like Quantic Dream as a studio. I think Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain, as silly as they can be, and as how badly they've aged over the years, I still think they are good games. I enjoy playing them, even though with the clunkiest shit controls, I do enjoy playing them. Beyond Two Souls, no. I thought that was just a bunch of pretentious bullshit. I, I could not get into that. Um, but I'm hoping Detroit Become Human is is a bounce back for Quantic Dream because this game and it's not and I've seen David Cage go on multiple like the the PlayStation you know talk show and stuff like that and he's like well you know this this story about a uh, androids being the good guys and humans being the bad guys, we've we've had this before David this is not an original concept so. Uh, I'm hoping something in Detroit makes this stand out from all the other AIs aren't so bad stories that we've had. So, and even then, that was like five PS4 exclusives in a row now, which was very awesome. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! There's that's like that's more than last year. Uh, and how could they? I, I, I'm a point here. I said, how can this get any better? And I, I was worried. I'm like. They, there has to be a moment where the momentum is going to die down. They, there has to be. Like, what can they do now? They they began with God of War, and they just proceeded to show four good quality looking PS4 exclusives. What can they do now? They started talking about VR, and I was like, oh no. Like, when the, the VR thing popped up, I'm like, oh shit, okay. Here we go. This is where it's going to veer off. And what they ended up showing was this really creepy-looking uh, 
trailer for some kind of first person horror game and it, it was like codenamed Kitchen. And I remember Angry Joe talking about Kitchen about a year ago. Like it was some really scary VR tech demo and I'm like, oh, okay, well I guess Kitchen's gonna be expanded into a full game now and it did its job. <laughs> it looked pretty fucking creepy, especially especially with the dilapidated house and all the grimy food that was around and just how ugly in a good way the house that the character was in looked and the fact that when he walked towards the door you just slightly just see a figure walk by and it was like oh god this is it's creepy so i and i liked it and i liked the longer it went on and then it started going to like 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 silent hill kind of stuff like you see like axes on tables and shredded photographs and you see one uh image that i cannot get out of my head like along with uh, we Happy Few's, like, dead rat pinata thing. There's an image in this kitchen trailer where they show, like, a, a white dog. Or, I don't know if it was a wolf or a dog. It was, like, this... I'm, I'm gonna say it's a dog. It was a dog that, like, its head was on the ground, and it was, like, melting into the ground. It was so... It was so, like, off-putting in a good way. And it's an image that's been, like, permanently ingrained into my head. It, it was it was such a creepy image, and and I was like, wow, this game looks really cool. This could be like the next PT or Outlast or something. It has a lot of Silent Hill influence, and it was Resident Evil Seven. And I was like, what? No fucking way! Like I was watching it with a friend of mine who's like a big Resident Evil fan, and he was like, what? That was Resident Evil? Holy shit! And of course, like it's coming, it's coming out in January, which I was like, I was like, wow, that's really soon. And then it was like, play the demo tonight. I'm like, there's a demo. Oh shit, where's the demo? Where's the demo? Um. So, but of course, the demo didn't come out for like another few hours. And I have played the demo, and I liked it. I I, I dug what the the tone that it's trying to set and. It, it's getting this weird backlash from people that, like, people are like, well, this is not Resident Evil. And it's like, well, it is. It, it is a game, it's a Resident Evil game that is taking influence from PT, taking influence from Outlast, taking influence from Condemned, taking influence from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but in combining all of that and putting a dash of Resident Evil flavor to it, like, it is... It is very distinctly Resident Evil, like, and even the the director confirmed, he's like, yeah, there's going to be combat, there's going to be herbs, there's going to be limited saves, it is Resident Evil. It has less zombies in it, but all the encounters you will have are fucking terrifying, because you are trying to survive by the skin of your teeth, and I think that is great, and I'm very happy that Resident Evil is no longer fucking Call of Duty with zombies now, um, which... Actually, that's kind of redundant, because zombies are in Call of Duty. Whatever, it's, it's not Call of Duty anymore. It is going back to its core. It's going back to, to survival horror, which I could not be happier about. So, I liked I liked, liked the demo. Really, really loved that trailer. I, I love the trailer that they showed during the conference. Not as crazy as the one that they released publicly, without the audience applause and everything, but I... If you're gonna see, if you're gonna be exposed to Resident Evil Seven, do it with that conf the trailer that was shown during the conference, where you see like the figure in the door and stuff like that. It's 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 creepy. Um, and what was interesting too is that it's one of like the big VR games coming to PlayStation VR, and for once, like for a little bit. It tricked me, it almost tricked me into being really excited for a VR game. I was like, holy shit. And then you find out, oh, well then you don't need VR for this. It's Resident Evil 7. You can play it without VR. But you, but you almost had me. You almost had me, Sony, which is more than I can say for Oculus and HTC and Ubisoft and all, and all that. But you almost had me. Um, but then they went into like, you know, like a, a very small, thankfully, very small VR montage with some probably some big heavy hitters. Like, they came out with a Star Wars, the Star Wars Battlefront VR experience, which had been announced a few months ago, which looks cool. You get to fly an X-Wing, which I think is gonna, right there, is gonna sell some copies. Um, you've got a Batman 
a made Batman VR experience made by Rocksteady, which is that's interesting. I, I that's the one that I'm like the most curious to, tr to like to try out. If I were to get a VR system, that is one that I would want to try out because I've heard good things about it. I've heard it's like a visual novel of some kind, and and hey, Mark Hamill's in it as the Joker. That's great. <laughs> I I mean I'll, I'll more most likely want to watch it on YouTube than I will want to play it, but. Cool, Batman PSVR exclusive. That's great. Um, and then they showed some like space game. I forgot to look up the title for it, but it looked okay. It was like a first-person shooter space kind of thing. Looked all right. Um, then like the weird one, Final Fantasy 15, where you get to take down the behemoth and flirt with Cindy, um, which I kind of was like, uh, okay, Square Enix. All right, but that trailer that they showed for Resident Evil, uh, not Resident Evil, that trailer that they showed for Final Fantasy 15, that new one, that that made it look way better than Xbox did with that demo. It looked a lot more colorful and and bright and alive. It was fun, um, just not so much the VR experience. And I've I've heard it's not all that good. I've heard it's actually pretty terrible from what I've read, and it sounds not very appealing for me personally. Um, and then they moved on to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, which I must admit, I, I kind of tuned out of this one. I was I, I knew they were going to do this. I'm like, okay, there's going to be a point where they have to talk about Call of Duty because they got the big, you know, PS exclusive DLC and, and now you can play the Modern Warfare 1 ex uh, campaign 30 days earlier than on Xbox, which whoop de fucking do Um... Yeah, I mean, during this time, I, I kind of was, like, researching Resident Evil 7, but I, I, I every so often, I kind of, like, glanced up, and I, I looked, and I was like, oh, this looks all right. Like, it looks it looks tolerable. It looks like, you know, Call of Duty set in space. Um, uh, it looked fun. <laughs> God damn it. I, I hate to admit this, but... Yeah, that did kind of look fun. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure the game itself is going to be not all that great because I, I, but that that demo did much better job at selling me on this than that really mediocre tr reveal trailer. But this, it looked kind of fun. I must admit, it like the space combat looked fun. Uh, it was, it, it had. I guess cool gunplay where you could grapple a guy and take off his helmet and equip a grenade and he'd explode in midair and in space and it's like it's like okay fuck it it's Call of Duty in space so okay I you, you're you're not exactly selling me on this but you're not putting me off either I I I will admit if this comes to Redbox. I might check it out just out of sheer curiosity, but I'm not expecting anything from this because uh, you know I didn't. I did not like Call of Duty Black Ops Three at all. I avoided Advanced Warfare. Um, Ghosts, I don't mind. Like I've said, I don't mind Ghosts. Not great. Not even good, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, that was Infinite Warfare, and then they rubbed in the rubbed salt in the wound again regarding the fucking Modern Warfare remaster, which, hey, Activision, why don't you stop bullshitting us and sell that separately? Why don't you stop being a dick and sell it separately? Thank you. Stop being a dick. Um, and then they moved on to Crash Motherfucking Bandicoot. Um, I don't think this reveal for Crash, and I loved the way, like, when the music started playing and Sean Layden walked out and he, he had, like, the, the the Crash shadow behind him and, and stuff like that. That was a really nice touch, and that, again, that helped with the live orchestra. Um, but I don't think this is the the announcement that a lot of people were expecting. But I, I was happy. I'm happy that we're getting the original Crash trilogy on PS4. That's great. Um, I think it's being developed by the guys that do the Skylanders thing. And from what I've heard, Skylanders is a is a damn good series. I, mean, I have no interest in the, the toy collecting stuff, but out of the three, I hear Skylanders is the most like consistently good. Um, but 
I'm I'm wondering if this remaster of the Crash trilogy is going to be something like you know just a straight HD port of the original game, just with slightly better graphics, or if they're going to go like whole hog and do the Ratchet and Clank treatment, where they just completely add like add a ton of new stuff, take the graphics and add so much new color and and awesome shit in the background to look at. I I wonder if I, I wonder if that's what's going to be, or if it's just going to be a sl slightly upgraded remaster in HD. But they said, they said from the ground up, and from the gr when I, when someone says from the ground up, I I think of now the standard for that is like the Ratchet and Clank remake. So I'm I'm hoping it's that remake because if they give the Crash trilogy that kind of respect and treatment, that would just melt my heart <laughs> that would that would that would make that would melt my little sony heart um but yeah that was great and for people that are complaining like oh he's gonna be in skylanders oh i don't want the hd crash trilogy i want a new crash think about it this could be the start of something really special um between sony and activision because sony right now has a really good really really good reputation or not exactly like like a really good partnership with activision with like call of duty and destiny and a bunch of other stuff and this could be the thing that gets the dice rolling for a a crap like an original crash game on the ps4 developed maybe like with naughty dog maybe th this might be the thing that gets the ball rolling so one can hope, and and if that Crash trilogy sells a lot, that will prove to Sony and Activision that the market demand is there. So they might go ahead and be like, "Wow, let's let's eke out some deal where we're going to bring Crash back to the PS4 in a new game." And also, um, I wonder if this Crash trilogy is going to be a PS4 exclusive. They didn't. I, I know they said ground up for the PS4, but they never said exclusively for the PS4, which I'm not sure. This might be a multi-platform thing, might be a timed exclusive thing, but we'll see. Um, I, the wordplay on this is a little, a little vague. And then they talked about LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens, which, to be honest, is probably the one thing out of the conference they could have cut out. Like, one of the very few little trims of fat on there. So, they could have just easily cut that out, no question. I think the only reason they had that is because to show off, oh, we have an exclusive demo. You can't get the demo for it anywhere else except PlayStation. It's like, it's like, thanks. You didn't really need that, but okay. And then <laughs> we moved on to something I never ever like two th two things actually that i never ever 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 expected to see at this let alone at like I, this year's conference and one thing i never expected to see so the first thing was hideo kojima himself like like andrew house came on and was like i want to introduce you guys to want like I want to bring you guys bring out one of the most famous game creators and I'm like I'm like oh my god the no way like and again I was having that moment like this conference has been so great how can they possibly keep this going like what else can they show that would make me go holy shit this is incredible bring out Hideo Kojima just walking out on stage to the the Mad Max Fury Road score and and he had this big beautiful smile on his face and everybody was just applauding his return and and it was like it was just wonderful to see how energized and happy he looked now that he's free from Konami he came out and he was like hey guys I'm back and the whole audience just exploded into this roar of applause again even the very best thing at Microsoft's conference, even the very best thing at other conferences, do not get anywhere near this kind of response as to when Hideo Kojima said, I'm back. And the whole audience just went, whoa, yeah, I was like clapping. 
So we got the very first um, teaser for his next game, which is called Death Stranding. Weird as fuck title, but this is it's Kojima we're talking about. So it has a, a naked Norman Reedus. I was very happy when Norris, Norman Reedus popped up. Like when Norman Reedus, I was like, oh shit, Norman Reedus! Because you know, with the whole PT and all that, and 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 you know they've wanted to work. We all know they've wanted to work together. But if this is it, confirmation: Norm Reedus is the main main star of Kojima's next game. So Norm Reedus naked on a beach with black handprints, kind of like going in and out around him. He has a baby, uh, contact uh, like connected via some kind of tube to his stomach and he like wakes up and he grabs the baby and he holds it and he's kind of like crying and then it disappears and he's got like usb dog tag ports around his neck and then there's the, his hands are black and like the whole his body starts getting the handprints on there and he looks out into the ocean and you see like dead fish dead crabs dead whales and it's like this beach area this desolate beach area and then there's like figures floating in the sky and he it was so fucking weird even by even by Kojima's standards this was fucking weird but I loved it and it I, I cannot wait even though they didn't show us jack shit about what the game's gonna be like I cannot wait for this game I, I this is like holy shit I need this game right now I want to know more about it immediately so that was that was something I never expected to happen with Kojima coming out and revealing his next game which holy shit that was one of the biggest highlights not only of this conference but of the entire E3 this year and the second thing they announced was something I I mean eventually we were going to see what Kojima's next game was eventually but I never never ever 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 expected we would ever get a PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game. Like I would like I Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel superhero. Um so and but he recently he's not had a good track record with games. A lot of them just feel like the assembly line crap and that has to do with Activision just cranking them out. But I mean I I I love I used I love the Spider-Man 2 the the game. Like, that's one of my very favorite games. I still remember playing it for the very first time at my dad's shop and swinging through the city. I was like, oh my god, dad, look at this! And, like, Spider-Man just flying. I mean, I felt like Spider-Man. You know how, like, the Arkham games make you feel like Batman? Spider-Man 2 made me feel like I was Spider-Man. Now, I don't... It's no guarantee that this game is going to be as good as Spider-Man 2. Probably won't be, but one can dream. Again, I'm just I'm shocked that this actually happened. I don't I don't know what what voodoo witchcraft Sony and Marvel pulled to negotiate the rights to Spider-Man games from Activision. I mean, Activision is notorious for hoarding licenses. So, I I don't know and I didn't see a single act and I went through that trailer I didn't see a single mention of Activision throughout that trailer, throughout any of the, the press stuff. I don't. I guess Activision is not part of it. I guess this is Sony and Marvel's baby, and it's being given to Insomniac, which which is like holy shit, that's awesome. Like I saw Insomniac's name, and I was like, oh my god, what what is what is this? And then I saw Marvel, and I'm like, I'm like, no. No, 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 no way. And then, like, Spider-Man popped up, and I was like, no fucking way! No fucking way! That's so cool! Because there was this rumor for a long time that Sucker Punch, the guys that made Sly Cooper and Infamous, were going to make a PS4-exclusive Spider-Man game. And I was like... And I was like, that's not possible. I mean, people... like, hey, That's not possible, because... Activision owns the rights to Spider-Man. There's no way we're gonna get a PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game. The, you guys are you guys are fucking tripping. There's no fucking way. This rumor's bullshit. 
I was half wrong. <laughs> I was, well, I was, okay, I was wrong. We did get a PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game. Again, speechless. I, I have no idea how that happened. Um, they must have paid a hell of a lot of money to get that from Activision. Um, but it's not being work, worked on by Sucker Punch, which I don't, that still leaves the question as to what is Sucker Punch working on. I hope it's another Sly Cooper game. Um, but it's being made by Insomniac, which I, of course did Ratchet and Clank and Spyro the Dragon and Resistance. So and recently uh, the Ratchet and Clank remake and um, Sunset Overdrive for Xbox. They're a very good studio, very very good track record, very long track record, um, and I'm glad to see that they're keeping up that exclusive, not exclusive partnership, but like like they are continuing even now that they're independent they are continuing to work with playstation on exclusive stuff so i'm very happy about that and i'm very happy that we are getting a spider-man ps4 exclusive very very happy so um th but that wasn't the end of the show they they ended it weird it was it was weird that they ended it with Days Gone. It was like a demo of that, and the demo of it was good. I liked, I liked it, but it it felt kind of like a step down from the other stuff that we'd been shown. I I think Death Stranding should have been the grand finale, um, or um, or uh, uh, Resident Evil Seven or something like that, like a, a big heavy hitter. But the thing is. I don't, Days Gone just didn't feel like a heavy hitter, it, I mean, it wasn't as weak as shit as, like, the, the Paragon ending to PlayStation Experience last year, but it, it just felt a little off, and I've heard rumors, I'm, I'm, they're denying it, but there is some, there is something a little off about how they ended the show, and they, they're denying that, like, no, we didn't change anything, you know, all of this is, you know, we've had this, this conference, schedule locked and set for months no changes i don't believe that um and i mean even if and but if that's true that was a very weird strange idea to end with days gone instead of something more you know like buzzworthy um but it mm. And the, the popular rumor right now is that they were going to reveal Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, I've heard this rumor on the internet, I've heard it on Reddit, I've heard it quite a bit of places that they were going to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2, but there was a scene in it that had, like, a mass shooting in a saloon, and because of the Orlando shooting, they kind of were like, yeah, let's not do that trailer. Um, can we edit that out in time for E3? And I guess Rockstar was, uh, according to the rumor, of course, so take this with an enormous grain of salt, It they didn't have time to re redo the trailer. So they had to cut it out and then bring something else in. So they, they moved up. I've never seen this before, where they announce, like, a game and then, then show the live demo of it later at the end. I don't know. So, I don't know. That, that's just a rumor, but if that's we we find out that's what happened, that makes a lot of sense. Because it, it threw the pacing off of the conference. But even so, even with a rather, it kind of, sort of, anticlimactic ending, even with LEGO Star Wars slowing down the momentum, Call of Duty kind of slowing it down... They put on one of the best E3 conferences I have ever seen. Um, I, I they easily, easily, and I know uh, Total Biscuit won. I mean, Total Biscuit made a video recently, like like what does Sony win at E3? Well, in my opinion, E3 is all about getting people excited for a product. Like like what is the stuff that's coming to the product? And like I want to get excited for that, and for me personally, like in terms of winning that, like that kind of excitement factor, I think Sony like steamrolled over everybody else this year. Steamrolled over EA, steamrolled over Ubisoft, steamrolled over Microsoft, steamrolled over Bethesda. They came in and showed stuff that I did not expect to see. I didn't expect Resident Evil Seven to look that good. I, I especially didn't expect God of War to look that good. 
I didn't think we'd ever see Kojima on that stage talking about uh, his next project so soon. I didn't think we'd ever see a PS4 Spider-Man game, like a ex PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game in my life. I was very happy that Crash was there, and I kept saying, no, Crash is not going to be there, but Crash is there. So, Sony, can we get Spyro the Dragon remastered, please? You, you, you got a good relationship with Activision. You can get those rights, hopefully. But even the VR stuff was not bad. It was quite good. And for once, I actually almost was interested in it. And they brought out their, I mean, with the exception of the Final Fantasy 15 thing, they brought out their, their A game with VR, which is something I never expected to say about this conference. So, uh, and it, and all of this, all of this was little over an hour, whereas Ubisoft went on and on and on for two hours, and all the other conferences, I think Bethesda was the shortest, at like, oh no, that went on for like an hour and a half, um, Microsoft was an hour and a half, EA was an hour, this was, like, and, 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 PlayStation has kind of is kind of known for doing like really long conferences, but I was astonished when it ended, and I looked at the clock. I'm like, that was an hour. That was like an hour where they just they were like kaboom, kaboom, kaboom with like tons of stuff. They barely had room to breathe, like it, but it was paced so well for the most part, and like no one came out to talk except the right people. Like, the only game creator that came out to talk was the right one in the form of Hideo Kojima. Um, we had a live orchestra, which I think should be the gold standard now. I think it should be the, the basic standard for any major conference now. I think Microsoft should have, should have a live orchestra next year. I hope Sony has a live orchestra next year. Um, and this, again, like last year, this was like... A, a wish fulfillment checklist of stuff that I want. Like, it's like it's like last year, Sony sat me down and was like, what would you like at this conference? I'd like The Last Guardian. Okay, we have The Last Guardian. What else would you like? Um, what about a, a new really awesome IP? Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Boom, right there. Um, awesome Uncharted 4 demo. Boom, right there. Um, this year, it was like the exact same thing. And I will go so far as to say that I think this conference was better than the Conference of Dreams last year. Because, and I'll tell you why, even though no announcement this year came close to, like, not came close, but did not match the excitement, the, the surge, the uncontrollable surge of excitement I felt when Final Fantasy VII was... Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced, or when The Last Guardian was finally re-revealed, um, but it, uh, this year had such good stuff, it was better paced than last year, it didn't have that long Call of Duty downtime, didn't have that long Star Wars downtime, um, it had less PR speak bullshit, they just went from game to game to game to game to game, which I think should be what every conference does, they barely had anybody on stage to talk, which is good, um, it was short, but sweet. It made me, it, it left me wanting more in a good way. Um, it's like a really good meal where it's like, wow, that was so good and so filling, but I want more and I cannot wait for more. Um, but yeah, this year, incredible. Letter grade, A minus. A minus, and I'm only going with, with A minus. I'm not going for the A because I did think the Lego Star Wars thing could have been taken out. I think. This, the Call of Duty thing felt kind of out of place there, and I felt the ending was weird with the, the Days Gone thing, but but even with those issues, those slight issues, this was a fucking phenomenal conference. Like, boom, you won, Sony. Easily won. Easily won E3 for me this year. And I, I cannot wait to play... <laughs> Uh, almost every single game that they showed, like, with the exception of, like, like, not counting the VR stuff, like, maybe only, like, one or two games, like, one, two, or three, like, like, the Infinite Warfare, Skylanders, and Lego Star Wars, every other game they showed, I want to play. 
I want to play Days Gone. I want to play God of War. I want to play Horizon Zero Dawn. I want to play Resident Evil 7. I want to play that Crash Bandicoot Trilogy Remaster. I want to play Death Stranding. And I sure as fuck want to play Spider-Man PS4. Um, but it, I, this was just wish fulfillment. That I, I cannot believe this. I was I was I was blown away by what I saw. Like it, like literally again, it's like Sony sat me down and was like. What would you like this year, Razor Blade Mango? Um, I'd like for you not to talk about VR very much. Okay, we can do that. Kaboom, didn't talk about VR very much. Um, I'd like to see some new I, new IPs, maybe? Okay, boom, Days Gone. Uh, boom, Spider-Man. Boom, Crash. Or not new IPs, but PS4 exclusives? Yeah, 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 same thing. Um, what about... I, you said Crash? Can, can I get Crash back? Can I get a crash new a new crash game? Well, no, you can we can't do that yet, but but would you like the the original crash trilogy remastered for the PS4? Fuck yeah, I would. Oh, all right, we can do that. Uh what else would you like? Um I'd like Resident Evil 7 to look cool. Okay, we can do that. Uh, would you like a, a demo to play tonight for that? Um yeah, that that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, Sony. You're quite welcome, Razorblade Mango. Um, okay, Resident Evil 7. Uh, uh, what else would you like? Just, just throw anything out. Oh, um, well, oh, I guess I'm just gonna fire a shot in the dark, but, um, what about Kojima making an appearance? Yeah, we can do that. We've already got him on the plane right now from, from Japan, and he's gonna reveal his next game. What? Well, Okay, c cool. Uh, uh, Alright, thank you, PlayStation. You're quite welcome, Razorblade Mango. So, yeah, that that was that was great. <laughs> I loved that. That saved E3 for me. Because this year overall, I thought was a big step down from last year, which isn't, you know, that's not hard to do because last year was the best E3 ever. This year, but even, even so, this year felt supremely underwhelming. Like, even the better conferences like Microsoft and Bethesda didn't have anything that really, really blew me away. But Sony came in and just, just, it made it look effortless. Just came in and was like, like, looked at the competition and just was like, we fucking got this. And just delivered an hour and ten minutes of awesome. And... It, I was very happy, very, very happy. Like I, <laughs> just, it made me even happier than last year. So I loved it. I loved it. This is to me, this was their best conference since 2013. This is like the second year in a row that they've dominated E3. So I guess I'm going to stop gushing about Sony now because I gotta, I gotta go to bed. Um, Alright, so thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of Sony's conference, of E3 in general this year. What games are you looking forward to the most? So, yeah, alright. Uh, that's been E3 2016. Uh, disappointing, but Sony surprisingly came in and saved the day. And they saved the best for last. Um, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, guys.